and welcome back now this is a bit off the cuff this video because we're talking about this device here which has got absolutely nothing to do with this one you're seeing at the back which was was going to talk to you about but this turned up yesterday and i thought hmm interesting should i use this or should i make my own what is it i want to give a big shout out to pcb way pcb prototype the easy way more interestingly though is that they're starting their pcb way fifth PCB design contest. Yes, we can get a free Pico just for entering. Let's see what that means for us. As you can see, they've got a huge website all about this. So let's scroll down and see what we can find. So for the timeline, the project design runs from the 1st of September to the 31st of December, 2022. Then they'll be reviewed throughout January. All right, and the result will be on the 6th of February, 2023. And that time will whiz around sooner than you can think, so get your project in quick. Now, what are the themes? Now, there are two specific themes here. There's one for next generation hardware, home automation, wearable stuff, or uh, Earth-friendly, so eco-type projects. And if your project doesn't fit into either of those, there's the free theme where um, you can do whatever you like. The first prize is $1,500 in cash plus a $200 coupon. I'll let you read those in your own time. So if you need some inspiration as to what sort of project you can submit, have a look at the submissions bit of this page and uh, just see the high quality of projects already submitted. And uh, make sure you get your project in. Remember, it's got to be in by the end of December 2022. Good luck with that and let's hope you win. PCB way, always worth a look. Go and have a look now. Yes, now, first and foremost, it's over on my workbench, which means I've got, to, I've got to turn this way, so it's a bit awkward. Um, now, this is, well, supposed to be a pulse width modulated switch, right? These two big transistors you can see here are MOSFETs. They can take a huge amount of current each, I mean, like 30 or 40 amps. So and it's meant for 12 to 24 volts, and I thought, hmm... I needed something to control my pond pump that you saw I don't know, a couple of video go, videos ago, maybe. And I thought, OK, simple little MOSFET, not an Arduino, not even a Nano. I mean, you could get away with something like an 80, tiny 85, maybe. Just to have a pulse width modulated output to turn those output transistors on and off several hundred, if not thousands of times a second to bring the speed of that pump down so we can control it. After all, it's a tiny little pond, isn't it? It's a barrel pond, and we don't want the water, you know, shooting all over the side. So my wife said, can we not control it a little bit? So I tried putting on different voltages, so from 12 volts down to 9 volts to 7.5 volts, which is what it's running with now, but it's not, it's not really ideal, is it, to change the voltage itself. It'd be much better to keep the same voltage, that is 12 volts, but then switch it on and off so fast that it has the effect of a reduced voltage. But the advantage is you have still the 12 volt pulses, hundreds if not thousands of times a second, to give you that torque. So the pump will not stall, even if there's a bit of seaweed or something inside there. So I thought, okay, oh, have I really got to build it? And to be quite honest, I just couldn't face making something so well tedious and of course it's not just the making of the item is it it's finding an enclosure and doing all that and i thought how much of these things commercially and i found this one and you, and you can see this is the the face plate for it and i thought well and it's metal and i thought well that looks better i mean that, you know i couldn't make something like that not easily and i thought well it's all done and it had lots of good reviews on amazon it says it's pulse width modulated and i thought let's take a punt it's about, how much did I pay for this? I think I paid nine pounds for this, and I thought, what's nine quid in the scheme of things? Well, actually, these days quite a bit, but anyway, nine quid. Um, you can get it from exactly the same thing I might add, exactly the same thing from China and other outlets, much cheaper if you're prepared to wait. Well, I wasn't because I want to get this thing finished. But uh, yesterday, last night, when it turned up, I took it apart, had a look at it, and I thought, OK, it's got a couple of MOSFETs in there, and it's got an LM386 um, op-amp, dual op-amp, in fact. What's it doing? Let's have a look and see what sort of signal it's giving out. So let's have a look at the oscilloscope, just to see what the output is across this dummy load. This is just a wire-wound resistor here. Well, wire, yeah, it's wire-wound, covered in cement, or whatever it's called because um, it does need something on the output just to sort of make it all work. Let's have a look at the um, 
output on the oscilloscope to see what those square waves are going to look like and what this little variable resistor on here actually does, shall we? Okay, so here we are looking at the oscilloscope. At least I hope we are. I'll have to look that way to find out. Yes, we're looking at the oscilloscope and I've got it set to minimum on this little control down here, the variable resistor you saw. So let me turn that up from minimum uh, and see what happens. Oh, there we are. Look, now that's the start of the pulse width modulation. Well, I think it's pulse width modulation. Let's have a look. So as I turn it, more and more the pulses get fatter and fatter and fatter. So basically what's going to happen is that the motor gets a longer pulse several hundred times a second for longer. Yeah, so the pulses stay on longer. The mark space ratio gets adjusted. And if you look right down the bottom of that, let me get my little pointer. Uh, on here, you can see the frequency of these pulses. So these pulses are coming out at 704 hertz, 704 times a second. Um, but as I change the mark space ratio, you notice they don't really change that much. A little tiny bit down there, but not a, not a huge amount. It's not like we're increasing the frequency to several thousand or something. Um, this is a concern to me, this, this particular frequency. I'll come on to that. Um, but it does seem to be doing what it's supposed to be doing. Right at the very extremes, it goes a bit funny. Here, look, see, the pulse width is barely on, is it? However, I don't suppose my pump is going to respond very well to tiny little pulses like that. I think, I would imagine, it's going to have to start at something like this. Uh, duty cycle, well, about 50%, really. And 50% to 100%. As it gets right to the top, bang, it just switches on fully. So what that means is then that the the um, IC in that little integrated, uh, in that PCB, is basically running, well, a bit like an S-stable multivibrator. It's... Um, well, let's have a look at the PCB and talk about it a bit more there. But you've seen now exactly what it does, but simply by turning the pot yeah, from 100% down to zero. Cool. So underneath this uh, single-sided PCB, cheapskates that they are, um, there is, in fact, an IC, this one here. Yeah, that's the one. Now, that's an LM358 dual op-amp. And it's been configured almost certainly to run in sort of a, an as stable multivibrator mode. So basically it's generating a frequency controlled by this here pot. All right, great, that's fine. Um, that drives the gates on these MOSFETs. And these MOSFETs are basically just paralleled up. There's two in parallel. And that's done quite often to allow for a much wider current range. And just put my finger on now that you can't feel that. But then again, we're only sucking in at this minute, two milliamps. I don't suppose we would feel much. Um, by taking it up, it, I think it goes up to about half an amp or so I've got on here at the minute, because that's a 100 ohm resistor I've got on the base as a dummy load. So these can take about 40 amps, and that's when you're driving the gate of these at the full 10 volts. So this is not a suitable MOSFET for us Arduinoites. You wouldn't want to drive these with a, the output of an Arduino, uh, and certainly not of an ESP32 or anything like that, any 3.3 volt device, because it would not turn these on properly. It might not turn them on at all um, at 3.3 volts, but at 5 volts it'll probably start to turn them on, but then they're in their linear region, and these and they get damn hot, I tell you, they will, they will melt, or well, they'll melt the device they're connected to, because they're not supposed to be operated like that. The idea is that you give these sufficient voltage on the gate, so 10 volts, and then they switch on fully, and the resistance then between the source and the drain, that's basically the switch, is tiny, absolutely tiny. Okay, I think it's like, I don't know, 0.6 or 0 0.06 of an ohm. We'll have a look at the, the data sheet in a minute for this particular MOSFET. But MOSFETs generally have a very, very low resistance across them, which is why they can allow so much current to pass, of course. Great, so from my point of view, that's almost immaterial because my little pump takes at best um, about three to four hundred milliamps and the standby pump I've got the 12 volt one takes I think like 1.6 1.7 amps that's all so I mean yeah well over specified for what I need um, so underneath then you haven't really got much you've got uh, that's a voltage regulator there probably to supply this 
couple of capacitors, little tiny things down here, resistors, basically making all this generate a frequency to drive the gates. And you can look, you can see they're paralleled up, look, joined there, and this one will be joined to this one. Oh, there we are, look, there's the trace. And this one is joined to that one. But that's probably, it's probably a zero ohm. Oh, it says zero on it, look. So there's a zero ohm resistor on there joining these two tracks because they didn't use a double-sided PCB so they couldn't have any wires. Anyway, it's a very, very simple circuit. I'll see if I can dig out something off the internet because there must be loads of these. And as well as this dual op-amp IC, which I can only assume is very cheap, they could have, used, could have used a 555, for example. The only problem with the 555 is that when you're generating um, square waves like that, it's hard to get below the 50% um, ratio you have to then put a diode in series or no in parallel across one of the resistors or capacitor I remember that from from the 1970s that was always a thing that we had to be aware of but uh, apart from that it's an extremely simple circuit nothing on this side because um, well as I say not double-sided a bit worried about um, this pot have you noticed here are the mounting lugs look for the pot see that um, but they're not soldered in, they're just pushed through, which means this, if I can show you on the board, is going to have a bit of wobble. Look, is that wobble? It's actually moving. So I'll be soldering those in to give it a bit of stability. Now that's come off. Let's take that off anyway. <clears throat> yeah, so I said uh, initially that, um, okay, this is generating a, a pulse, and that's fine, but it's generating it at 700 hertz. Now, years ago, when I made my own PWM fan controller, I generated a pulse at a thousand hertz, and guess what? I could hear it. Yes, the, it, it modulated the speed of the fan. It was a PC fan, actually. Modulated the f speed of the fan 100%. It was great, really worked well. But you could hear this whine, just like that. Yeah, I know, just as annoying as that as well. And I thought, what is going on here? And of course, yeah, by, <laughs> I learnt then that you shouldn't be modulating at audio frequency because everything vibrates, doesn't it? That motor, that fan was vibrating at a thousand hertz. So I upped it to something like 10 or 15,000 and the noise went away. Um, now I'm worried at this 700 hertz, are my fishes gonna hear that? Now I don't, I don't wanna cause them stress, do I, after all? Is 700 hertz enough or should I in fact be changing this in some way so that it's generating a frequency of you know well 10,000 plus because it'll work the same um, I don't know I'm gonna have to read up about what goldfish can hear because the last thing I want to do is control the pump with this which is buried in the water of course it's dropped in there inside the, the pond and have it vibrating at those 700 Hertz that the, the fish um, can hear and cause them stress so I'm having to think a bit longer and harder about that. If worst comes to worst, bearing in mind what I said about, you know, it's hard to make a case like this and more professional, um, I could just ditch this whole thing here and create my own PCB with my own, I don't know, 80 tiny 85 or something, do a proper pulse width modulated output. Well, I'd use a TTL level, gate level, um, 5 volts, transistor that works for things like Arduinos. Um, so it needs a 5 volt gate or TTL level transistor transistor logic and then it would turn on fully with those 5 volts and would not get hot because even though I'm only drawing a very low current it's still going to get um, hot even uh, fairly low currents because of the resistance across the drain and the source of the MOSFET. So I might just ditch it all and think, oh, I'll cut my losses. I've paid for a case, you know, basically. Um, there, is a, there is, in fact, a base of, for this somewhere. It's metal and it all screws together. But, um, and I could keep these, um, these clips, for example, and use those. But we'll see. I might be able to modify this circuit to act at a higher frequency, which would get around the problem as well. Because as I say, the circuit is not that complicated. We shall see. Um, I'm hoping the fishes appreciate all this when they have their variable speed motor for their pump. Uh, yeah, hmm. What else can I tell you about this? Oh, let's, have, let's have a look at the data sheet now for these two and the chip, the LM38, uh, no, it's not 358, wasn't it, I think? 
So here's the data sheet for the operational amplifier they are using there. Now it's, in some ways it's a bit odd using an op amp for a, a multi like multi stable vibrator in some ways, although it's more common than I realised because there are lots of circuit diagrams. I'll show you one in a minute. Um, my in first call would be to use a 555, as I say, but then there are difficulties with getting it below the 50%. So maybe maybe this wasn't a bad choice after all. And as you can see, there's a whole big family of these. Um, there's the two op amps in each. Whether they this particular circuit uses both or just one, I don't know. But it has, you know, a wide input voltage, as you can see here. Um, yeah, there's, there's some good things about it. And I, I presume, I can only presume, it's dirt cheap, as they wouldn't be using it. Okay, let's have a look at the um, the MOSFETs then that are being used. So here we are. This is the um, MOSFET. It's an HY1707 um, N channel. Yeah, it would be. Um, 80 amps. Good grief. 80 amps it can, it can pass through there at 70 volts. Now, I would have thought if you did really want to pass 80 amps or even half that amount, surely even a MOSFET would have to be heat synced. Because even a tiny resistance is still a resistance. It's not zero resistance. So even a tiny resistance at that sort of amperage, I would have thought would generate quite a bit of heat. But they've got two in parallel. So they're saying maximum amperage of this product is 30 amps. But technically they could pass 160. Or maybe that 30 is just on the good side of not having to have a heat sink. I don't know. But uh, as a... MOSFET, this is fine. Let's look at the um, actual specs. Right, it wasn't further down. This is a data sheet now rather than whatever that was. Um, not complete, that's for sure. So let's have a look down here. Here we are. RDS on, that one there, drain to source resistance when it's switched on. With a 10 volt gate, which is why it's not suitable for Arduino use. And when it's sinking or passing 40 amps. It's six milli ohms. Well, that's, that's pretty low, pretty low, but I'm sure there must still be some heat generated. Right, I, I can't work it out of my head. If, all, if you're having, say, 30 volts at 40 amps through six milli ohms, what kind of power is that you're dissipating? Uh, oh, there it is on screen. Oh, thank goodness I can do this after I've spoken to you. Yeah, oh, well, that's obviously um, acceptable then, I guess. Hmm. Right, and here is um, a circuit that I found using, okay, not the particular MOSFET that was in that circuit. It uses an IRF540, which is much more uh, suitable, I think, for Arduino use. I think that's a 5-volt gate. Um, this uses an LM358 as well, the same. Right, so and it's controlled here by uh, a 10K pot. I'm pretty sure this must be a very similar circuit to the one on board. But if you notice, they're only using half the IC. The other pins are not connected. So whether that uses both, I'll have to reverse engineer it. Yeah, if I discover, well, when I discover anything, I'll just put it on screen here so you have some extra information. But that's basically it. They're using a motor here. I'll put a link into this video as well, actually, because what it shows you um, is a motor being controlled. Let's, um, let's show you here. There we are. So he's built this thing with the same chip, and he's going to start it off. There it goes. And you can slow it down. Yeah, exactly that. That's exactly what I want to do, except that my motor is not controlling a wheel. It will control... A pump in the pond so controlling the flow anyway that i'll put a link to that just so you can see it in action um, not identical to what's here but it's it's close enough okay i think we're probably done okay i think that's enough for this week um okay it was a little odd one this because this only turned up unexpectedly this is the base but incidentally it's metal base uh, all quite strong with the lid and they even give you a little knob to turn it with so it all looks quite nice and this is the this is the tricky bit, isn't it? Because I haven't got a 3D printer. Um, I can't really make cases and enclosures particularly well. So buying something like this and potentially replacing the internals um, is an option, I think, for me. And if I don't replace the internal, I might have to change the values. But there we are. Anyway, if you, if you think um, I shouldn't be doing this with this method of here, 
let me know in the comments down below. Uh, where are you? There you are. <laughs> comments down below. Um, anything you want to say, comment on, whatever, doesn't matter. Um, and if you like this video, if it was vaguely interesting, you think, oh, I didn't know about this or whatever, um, do please give me a like because we want the yay. Hey. Uh, that one, yeah. And um, if you like these videos generally, they're not normally as messy as this. They're a bit more structured, to be quite honest. Um, do please subscribe, but don't just subscribe. Tick the bell, because if you don't tick the bell, you won't know I've released another video. I know, crazy, crazy. So do both. And I'll see you in the next video. I hope you're finding these videos useful and interesting. There are plenty more videos to choose and a couple are shown below. And if you'd like to subscribe to this channel, just click on my picture below and enjoy the rest of the videos. Thanks for watching.